Hello and welcome to Saki Tech. In today's video, we will do a spec by spec comparison between the newly released Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition with Apple's brand new iPad Air. This is the fifth generation iPad. So uh, let's dive right in. Okay, so let's start with the design. iPad Air comes out on top in this category with its premium aluminum finish that we know and love. It's solid and shiny, and when you hold it in your hands, it is clear that you paid good money for this sleek-looking tablet. Now, iPad Air also gets an overall design refresh in this fifth-generation installment, which makes its overall design even more appealing to the eyes. The bezels around the edges now take minimal space, and you see more of the screen and less of the bezels. Now, Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition is an improvement over its predecessor mainly due to the new back cover which is still plastic but it does profess a premium look and feel thanks to the fox leather finish so what used to be the glossy and flimsy back cover is now replaced by this leather look-alike texture which is easier to hold as well due to its better grip iPad wins in this uh, category quality wise uh, there's a clear-cut difference in build quality and that's just a fact so don't chop my head off just for siding with the iPad in this category nobody can tell me that a plastic finish could be better than a unibody aluminum finish so let's move on to the dimensions in my comparison of the Note 10.1 with the iPad 4 I hailed the Samsung as the thinner and lighter device now the iPad Air is out and behold it is in fact thinner and lighter than the Samsung Note 10.1 despite the aluminum build. So here are the specs. The Note 10.1 weighs 547 grams which is pretty um, light whereas the iPad Air weighs only 469 grams. The Note is 243.1 millimeters in length and 171.4 millimeters wide whereas the iPad is 240 millimeters in length and 169.5 millimeters wide and then the Note is only 7.9 millimeters thick while the iPad is 7.5 millimeters thick so the iPad Air is indeed the lighter and thinner device okay so next let's move on to the screen size and resolution so the Galaxy Note 10.1 comes with a super clear 10.1 inch LCD screen. Uh, the resolution is 2560 by 1600 which brings the pixel density to 299 pixels per inch. The iPad has a slightly smaller IPS LCD screen at 9.7 inches with a lower resolution of 2048 by 1536 pixels which brings the pixels per inches to 264 ppi which is basically the same screen size and resolution for last generation iPad in this department Samsung comes out on top with higher specs however the screen ppi's on each of these devices are already too high to make a difference to the naked eye so they will both come across quite crisp and clear so let's move on to more exciting stuff like the processor and the memory now in this department the Note 10.1 has monstrously better specs than the iPad Air at least on paper now at the end of this video I will run a processor and memory benchmark on both of these devices and that should give us an idea between the processing power between the two but before we do that let's spell the specs out now let me just make clear that Note 10.1 has two versions there's a Wi-Fi version and there's a LTE version uh, the one in this video is a Wi-Fi version, so let's me, let me start with that. Uh, the one I'm showing in this video has an Exynos Octa-Core processor, and Octa means 8. So we are talking about 8 total processing cores. Not all of these cores are clocked at the same frequency. 4 of them are clocked at 1.9 GHz, and the other 4 are clocked at 1.3 GHz. And then we have 3 GB of DDR3 RAM, and Adreno 330 graphics processor. The other version of Galaxy Note 10.1 is the LTE model which comes with a quad-core Snapdragon 800 processor clocked at 3. Uh, I'm sorry 
gigahertz with everything else staying the same. Now the iPad Air comes with a dual core A7 processor clocked at 1.4 gigahertz with 1 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. The graphics processor is IMG's PowerVR G6430. Now both these tablets start with 16 gigabytes storage. However, the Note is more expensive at $549, while Apple starts at $499 in US markets. The Note comes with a micro SD slot which allows you to add more storage as needed and uh, who doesn't love that? So now let's move on to the software. iPad runs on the latest version of iOS 7 which comes with some useful enhancements like the control center and the updated notifications center. The Samsung Note 10.1 runs on the latest version of Android 4.3 with Samsung TouchWiz overlay. Now I usually don't like overlays, but TouchWiz brings some fantastic functionality and features all by itself, not to mention the S Pen which adds even more functionality. Now S Pen integration will allow you to take some very precise notes and draw realistic art if you're into that kind of stuff. In this category I have to side with Samsung. Its operating system is simply much more appealing and useful to me than iOS 7, which is virtually uncustomizable as opposed to Android. With Android, you can tweak the looks of your device to meet some very specific needs. I can have live widgets keeping me up to date with relevant, relevant information such as news and weather. I can move these live widgets around. I can empty my home screen completely if I want to show a gorgeous background picture and such. Now with iOS 7 all you get is a static lock screen and a static home screen and it's all populated with a bunch of apps and folders. As far as customization goes all you can do is change your wallpaper. As for overall smoothness Android with TouchWiz and iOS 7 are both very smooth. However the, there was occasional stutter while working with TouchWiz which simply doesn't exist on the iOS 7, on the iPad Air especially. Now another important thing to note is that apps from the App Store on iOS 7 are definitely better designed, better looking and better optimized. Though we have to make a clear distinction here. Samsung comes with built-in apps that are exceptional in quality and function such as the S Pen apps and Air Command functionality. But when it comes to App Store apps, iOS 7 offers better apps as opposed to Google's Play Store apps. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's take a look at the cameras next. Uh, I have never used a camera on a tablet that I ever owned, whether that was an iPad or an Android tablet. But here are the specs for those of you who care iPad Air has a rear-facing 5 megapixels eyesight camera and a 1.2 megapixels front-facing camera which they also call the FaceTime camera. The Note 10.1 has an 8 megapixels rear-facing camera and a 2 megapixels front-facing camera. Both these devices are capable of recording video in 1080p. And just to clarify on the iPad you can only record at 1080p using the rear facing camera. The front facing camera is only capable of recording at 720p. On the Note 10.1 you can record 1080p on either side. And then let's talk about the battery life. The Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition has a 8220 mAh battery which will translate to a full day of generous use without any problems. Now Samsung is advertising their battery life as up to 9 hours. Now on the iPad spec sheet it says the iPad has a 32.4 watt hour battery which is a different unit of measurement. Apple is advertising their battery life as up to 10 hours. But basically this, is also, this also translates to a full day of generous use. And by generous use I mean browsing the web, listening to music, watching some YouTube videos, maybe a movie, playing with some apps and games. 
So iPad may actually give you that extra hour that they are advertising. And finally, I want to look, take a look at some miscellaneous features. Now, the Note 10.1 does come with a very exclusive S Pen, which is a highly precise stylus capable of producing very accurate typing, sketching, and drawing, which is something entirely lacking on the iPad. Even if you buy a stylus for the iPad, it doesn't come anywhere near to the capabilities of the S Pen. Just remember that the Note 10.1 is designed from the get-go for finger and stylus use. So now let's run the processor and memory benchmarking tool. So let me clear everything that is running in the background and let's clear the memory from the task manager in Samsung. Okay, and let's take a look at the iPad and make sure nothing is running in the background. Okay, swipe up, go away, go away, gone. So we have clean slates. So let's launch Geekbench on each of these uh, tablets and press Run. Okay, so let's uh, let's let this run its course. And once again, this is the Geekbench benchmarking tool. What it does is it measures the processing and memory power of devices across cross platforms. So we can, in fact, compare the ending results and um, it has some meaning to it. Okay, so the results are in. The um, Samsung scores at single core performance 968. The iPad scores 1479. And in the multi-core speed, the uh, Samsung scores 2677. And the iPad scores 2685. So the results in the multi-core performance are pretty similar, but in the sim uh, single core performance, the iPad in fact beats the Samsung. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more videos to come. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked this video, and also you can go ahead and connect with me socially on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter for which all the links are in the description below. Thank you again and I'll see you the next time. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, just throw them down in the comments section below.